In this episode, a brother's fear leads to a harrowing birth experience. Witness the emotional roller coaster as one sibling questions his ability to be a father. But first, am I the butthole for kicking my half sister out of my dad's wake? Posted by Kicked Out The Wake. My dad had five kids with four women. Messy, I know, but he's dead, so I'd appreciate everyone being respectful. We are 36, 34, 27, me, 25, Nicole, and 19. None of us are close to Nicole because she is always insanely selfish, possessive, and has the world's most draining victim complex. We all had as little contact with her as possible. Prior to this wake, none of us had spoken to Nicole outside of family weddings for years. Of all of us, I was closest to my dad in his last couple of years and took care of him the most. So when he passed, I was the one to work through all the paperwork and organize the funeral, his belongings, and his wake. At the wake, there are about 70 people, all in my dad's house. I was sort of in work mode to avoid the grief, and making my way around the room, etc. When I noticed Nicole had arrived, I asked my aunt to greet her and continued with what I had to do. I did greet Nicole but she kept trying to come up and talk to me during the wake, wanting to go to a separate room to talk and generally seeming a bit erratic. I kept trying to hint that I really didn't have the time or the emotional space to be fully in my feelings at that time, but she just didn't seem to get the message. This went on for nearly two hours and I was tired, my feet hurt, my blood sugar was low, and as pathetic as it sounds I really just wanted to talk to my dad who was in the ground. I wasn't having the best day. So I finally sat down with my little sister, and Nicole storms over and in front of the entire room, raises her voice and says something like, oh, so you have time for her, and not me? My dad in alive too, and I am trying to talk to you. I don't know if I was in my right mind honestly because I still do not remember feeling anything that day other than lightheaded and completely and utterly incensed by Nicole's outburst. I told her, quietly, Nicole, someone has unalived. You are not the victim today. I will not deal with this embarrassment on top of everything else. Get out of my house. She started arguing with me but I just walked away and my fiancé escorted her out while I went into the kitchen for a few minutes. I've had to block Nicole because of the amount of messages she sent. But since the dust has settled, a couple of relatives I've spoken to have said it was harsh to kick her out because she was sad about the Unilive. I think that considering this is a pattern of behavior for her, it didn't have much to do with the grief. My siblings agree but a few family members have gently suggested I reach out and apologize. Should I? What do you think of all of this? Let me know of your thoughts in the comments below. It's unfortunate that Nicole's past behavior may have overshadowed her grief during this difficult time, but it's important to consider the impact of her actions on others and whether an apology is truly warranted. A comment from author 124. Not the butthole you didn't kick her out because she was sad about the alive. You kicked her out because she was being demanding and entitled to your attention specifically. Why couldn't she have tried to talk with one of your other siblings? Why does that responsibility solely fall to you? OP replied to that. They didn't want to talk to her either. But I guess because she saw me comforting my sister, she chose to confront me. And then I am the one who kicked her out, so that is on me. Am I the butthole for telling my brother that he's going to be a crap dad? Posted by Superb Dirt 3747. I, 30-year-old male, was at my brother's, 34-year-old male, house when my sister-in-law, 31-year-old female, went into labor. They live in the countryside, so the signal isn't too great sometimes, unless they walk up the lane, so my brother was supposed to take her to the hospital, instead of calling ambulance, but for some effing reason, he decided to freak out and drive off somewhere. I can't drive, so I ran up the lane to call 990. It took forever to get signal, and then it took forever for the ambulance to get to the house. I almost had to deliver the baby for fuck's sake. She ended up giving birth in a huge back of an ambulance. This whole time my brother had just disappeared. He finally turned up at the hospital about eight boyfriend hours after he disappeared. Apparently he'd gone to our dad's house until our found out my sister-in-law gave birth and made my brother go see her. I yelled at him outside the hospital for being so effing stupid. He told me that he just got scared and didn't know what to do. I told him that he's going to a crap dad if he keeps reacting like this. What's he gonna do when the kid gets injured and it's his responsibility to take him to A and E? Is he just gonna dump the kid and run off to dad's again? He's such an idiot effing hell. He started crying and called me a twat for being so mean to him. I just lost it with him. He was acting like a child when he should be comforting his effing wife and apologizing to her for being a willy. He called me a c-word and told me that I don't understand what he's feeling. I get that he was scared but he seriously needs to get a grip and help his wife. Am I the butthole? It's concerning that the brother, who should have been a source of support during his sister-in-law's labor, instead disappeared and left the situation in the hands of others. 
His actions raise questions about his ability to handle emergencies and be a responsible father figure. Glasgow Girl 33 commented. Oh yes, you're the butthole, a major butthole. A comment from Sofeld Dizzy. Soft you the butthole, I am torn because you didn't wait until his mental health crisis was settled, so while your anger made sense, it would not have helped as much as encouragement praise and telling him he has got this. Becoming a parent can be the most terrifying thing I would have run very far when I went into labor, but could not as I am the mother. He has a lot of apologies to do and work to rebuild trust and needs to get therapy, but seems to come from a good family, and surely he will be a good dad. OP replied. That's fair, thanks. Dear listener, if life is rough right now, please know that your feelings are valid. It's okay not to be okay. Am I the butthole for installing a slide lock on my bedroom door without my parents' permission, ruining the doorframe? Posted by Eastern Chicken 1734. I, 17 year old female, live together with my parents and younger brother, Mike, 15 year old male. Mike often has friends over. Problem is that Mike has absolutely no respect for my privacy. He and his friends often barge into my room at completely random times. It has happened multiple times that they end up barging in right as I am half-naked because I am changing or getting dressed. I complain to my parents so many times that I want to lock on my door if Mike keeps going into my room, but they just don't care because he's just playing. So when Mike and my parents were both out at some point, I installed a slide lock on my bedroom door. Admittedly it doesn't look great because I never did anything like this before, but at least it works. Nobody knew I did it either, so I was kind of pleased with myself. Now yesterday Mike tried to barge into my room again, but this time I had the door locked so he couldn't get in. He started yelling and told our parents that I locked the door, so when my parents checked, they obviously saw what I did. My father got really mad and removed the lock I installed and yelled at me that I ruined the frame and the door, and that the repair costs will come from my allowance. I think this is really unfair since I wouldn't have had to do this if Mike would just have stopped going into my room randomly. Was I wrong for installing the lock? I don't think asking for a little privacy was that much to ask for. It's concerning that the parents seem more upset about their daughter installing a lock on her own door for privacy than they are about their son repeatedly barging in on her. Shouldn't respect for personal boundaries be a priority? A comment from C-Strategy 8815. Definitely not the butthole. I don't know why your parents think it is okay for Mike to play like that with his friends. Even a misogynistic household don't want strangers to see their daughter naked. Maybe you should just go into your parents' and brother's room at any time and say you are playing. Not actual advice might get you into more trouble. However, your parents are not going to help, so you have to figure out how to get your brother to stop on your own. Start calling him a pervert to him, and your friends, break into his room, get your girlfriends to do the same to him. You might get in a bit of trouble, but it will stop. Not for Comentino Goo commented. Not the butthole. Tell a teacher how your teenage brother and his friends make a habit of barging in on you while you are undressed, and that your father not only refused to give you a lock, but took the lock off. Because your father is badly letting you down here. The school are legally obliged to take this seriously and should at least have a firm word with him about this. He's also setting Mike up for failure, boys will be boys no longer gets men off rope charges. Would I be the butthole if I called out my cousin to the whole family about the name she's chosen for her baby? Posted by Throwy Midwest Road. Sorry for any mistakes, this is my first Reddit post. I, 32-year-old female, come from a fairly large family. With my dad's side being Italian, we have always been extremely close. I have two older siblings, a brother and sister, and a younger half-brother. Growing up, we were thick as thieves with our cousins. They were as good as sisters to me and my siblings. Me and my older siblings lost our mom when I was 10 months old. My dad was driven into alcoholism, which led to us being put into foster care for a while. With how hard our mom's loss hit my family, no one from the extended family ever talked about her. No one brought her up or really mentioned her to us out of fear of sending my dad back into alcoholism. On top of all of that, we also lost our dad back in 2016. A while back, both my sister Stacy and cousin Beth, fake names, announced they were pregnant. With Stacy having a boy and Beth having a girl. About two months ago, Stacy reached out to Beth and asked her about baby names they're thinking of. Beth and her husband had gone back and forth on names but the first one they agreed on was our dead mother's name. Stacy nicely told Beth that me, her, and our brother have all talked about using our mom's name for one of our own kids. And if she were to use it, it would hurt all of us a great deal. So you'd think that would be the end of it, but no. I imagine growing up with parents that made a lot of money and rarely told you no can sometimes make one lack empathy. After Stacy and Beth talked, Beth ghosted for six weeks. 
After which she sent me and my older siblings a group text where she stated that they're moving forward with using our dead mother's name. Not because they want to honor our mom, and not because it holds some family significance on our husband's side. It's literally just the first name the two of them agreed on. Stacy has always been the one to speak for our sibling pack, but she's pregnant and need to stay calm. I already dedicated myself to my Disney villain era, so I went up to bat for me and my siblings and bluntly responded to Beth. If I can, I'll post the messages in the comments cause character limit. I love my family, but if my dad were still alive, he'd be raising more than just hell upon my cousin. I really want to bring this up with the entire family. I want to make it perfectly clear where me and my siblings stand, and what my boundaries are. I don't want to be at any gathering with Beth or her child. I don't want anyone to mention her child's name around me. They didn't mention my mom around us for 23 years. They can do it again. I feel bad because my uncle Beth's dad has always been there for us. He got us back to our dad when we were in foster care, and he helped with all the legal crap when our dad unalived. I just don't know if I'd be in butthole if I brought this up before Beth announces the name to the whole family. Would I be the butthole if I called out my cousin to the whole family about the name she's chosen for her baby? It's unfortunate that Beth seems insensitive to the feelings of her extended family by choosing a name with such personal significance without considering their feelings first. The situation highlights the importance of communication and respect in family dynamics. A comment from Confident Elk 9644. I really doubt you would be seeing as literally the entire family has avoided her name for years. A comment from No Albatross 7984. I mean, nobody owns the name, and she can name her baby what she wants. That said, you have a good reason to object. My stance on all these name arguments is, it's pretty much common sense not to do things that are hurtful to family members. If she is dead, set on doing something she knows to be hurtful to you, she can deal with the fallout of that action. Not the butthole. Am I the butthole for throwing out my sister and her boyfriend stuff? Posted by No Reflection 4705. For a backstory I, 21-year-old female, rent out a council house. My sister, Jane, 28-year-old female, and her boyfriend, Tom, 30-year-old male, fleece had ended and had nowhere to go. With two spare empty bedrooms I took them in no hesitation on agreement. They'd look for housing and help with bills as council tax goes up more with the more people in your home. They lived here for a year and a half and made my life an absolute living hell. They never cleaned their mess, never flushed the toilet or empty or rinse out the bathtub. They would leave moldy dishes, feed my dog things dogs shouldn't eat, has been to the vets he's fine, and worsely he smokes in my house, supposedly medicinal. I work full time in a nursery, so obviously that could cost me my job. And across nearly two years I only received 200 pounds sterling, about 8 pounds sterling and 30 pence a month. He done nothing but smoke, eat, make mess and play games. Anyways they ended up staying long overdue their welcome and they moved out around two months ago. However despite the countless efforts to persuade them to get the rest of their stuff I was ignored. And the state they've left my house in is ridiculous. I had no knives, fork, spoon, in their bedroom alone, there were seven plates, I only have. Eight, six bowls, four mugs, and ten glasses, a lot of them containing mold. I was left with no food in the fridge or freezer, which I was too tired to argue over because that is all I've done with them. Since they've moved out they still have my two spare bedrooms fully occupied and have blanked me many times when I asked them to come get it all. Last week was my last straw, I put everything in black bags and threw them in my garden. I sent a message that said, I am so tired of this. All your stuff is in the front garden, you and Tom are nothing but pigs and have done nothing but walk all over me and the kindness I showed the both of you by putting a roof over your heads. You are no longer welcome in my home, and I hope you treat your own with more respect and dignity. You are 28 and 30 grow up and stop living like you, or stop living like you are incapable of anything, and tell him to get off his arsiant. After that message I simply blocked her. Now I've been getting blown up by most of my family telling me how I was wrong, and that I hurt their feelings and that this is impacting them mentally. The only person who sided with me is my mom, because she says she knows that she raised Jane better than to live like that, and for other reasons I won't go into. So I don't know, Amita. It's unfortunate that the sister and her boyfriend took advantage of the OP's kindness and left the house in such a mess, disregarding their responsibilities and causing unnecessary stress for the OP. The family's reaction to the situation seems to be more focused on the feelings of the sister and her boyfriend, rather than addressing the issue at hand. Hardened Hotter Color commented, Not the butthole, not the butthole, not the butthole, not the butthole. Your sister and her boyfriend are total pigs, you got it right, and I'm glad you stood up to them, this is a valuable learning experience. 
This will stand to you in the future. Working full time and renting by 21 shows you have maturity and you will keep doing well now that you've learned the importance of shedding losers and leeches like this. OP answered. Thank you so much. This means so much more than you could know. Please consider subscribing. It is free and we post new Reddit stories every day. Check out our playlist with all our videos. You can find it in the description box below. Have a miavelous day and see you in the next one.